Anyway, here we are again, uh, crouched over, uh, staring at the ground in the bush. Here's a species in the myrtle family. This is a species in the genus Calothamnus. Notable about this, it's just got these, uh, these sh photosynthetic shoots. It doesn't have any leaves, uh, but even weirder, it appears to be flowering directly out of its uh, stem. Another plant in the myrtle family. Again, you can see it's got the stamens united into five bands, if you can get up close. Five bands circumscribing the uh, that central disc right there. And then, of course, uh, out of each one of those bands comes anywhere from between six to nine uh, filaments uh, with the anthers up top, the little purple anthers. Calothamnus lateralis. Just a really weird alien looking plant. <laughs> and then of course there's the fruits. You see once those flowers are done they just turn in little woody capsules that uh, just stay in a stem right there. So exile flowers. I don't even know if you would call it exile. It's more just directly in a stem. And of course look at all that new growth. The bright green new growth. Another fire adapted plant in the myrtle family. Ah, look at these dainty little pink fuckers. This is the genus Tomasia. This is a uh, pretty diverse genus here in Western Australia. I think you got like six or seven species at least. Malvaceae again. Look at all the trichomes. Look at all the uh, hairs and trichomes. I wonder if they're stellate hairs on those leaves and uh, stems. Some of these get, you know, this is just the, this is the little fucker. Some of these get up to like, you know, seven feet tall. There's bushes. Look at a, you know, paniculata or any of those. Again, Tomasi is that genus. Hey, okay, a brief return to the Fabid dungeon, the pea dungeon, the bush pea dungeon, Merbellioid tribe in the uh, Fabaceae, the greater pea family. Here's some of those seed capsules, those fruits. They don't look like the legumes you get uh, in the northern hemisphere. Look, they're just little capsules. You know, with uh, not that many seeds inside. And of course, they just dehiss uh, upon maturity, dropping the seeds down into the, into the litter and what the shit, where they'll remain until a fire comes through or the uh, seed gets uh, the scarification it needs to germinate. Again, dense clusters of flowers. Yeah, let's take a look at the stipules. See those little filamentous stipules, those hairs and shit? God, that's the fucking, it's <laughs> such a, they're so weird down here. They're so weird. Anyway, there you go, bush peas. One of the, you know, nine dozen different uh, species that's probably in this region, this tiny region where we are, the immediate local region. There are so many of them. And apparently they're very understudied. And the entire forest is just this uh, low growing eucalypt. Doesn't seem to get much taller than about 25 feet. You know, but it's got the real nice smooth bark. This is probably a eucalyptus ligulata because it's got strap-shaped petioles. You know, like a strap. You know? You ever been slapped around with a strap before? That smells pretty. All right, back to the pea dungeon. I'm really punishing you guys, huh? So, so this is an interesting one. The banner and the uh, the wings are both completely yellow. That is, there's no pattern on them. The only uh, part that's got a different color uh, right here is the keel, which is enclosed by those wings, of course. You can see the keels are red. And then, uh, important to note, too, is that instead of uh, the inflorescence being terminal, you know, and that gastrolobium down there, the flowers all just, you know, you get a whirl of flowers, and then just beneath that, when it's done flowering, just beneath that, another shoot opens up, and it just branches off to the side. And this one, it just continues to grow out of the center of... Uh, the shoot just continues to grow out uh, after those uh, flowers come out, you know. So they end up being more like axile flowers. And the stipules aren't as, uh, as pronounced on these either. It doesn't have those wonderful, uh, sexy stipules of gastrolobium, those filamentous stipules. Yeah, it's got a little bit, of, little bit of them, but they're not as pronounced. Anyway, all right, you done with the uh, Australian pea dungeon yet? The bush, the bush pea dungeon? You know, not me. It's pretty interesting. I got, I got to fucking, I got to figure these out. You know, because they're, they're blowing my mind, and uh, you know, it's very confusing. So, <laughs> holy shit, very confusing. Another thing about the bush piece too is, I guess the merbellioids do not produce isoflavones. Remember, isoflavones were those compounds in soy that everyone was worried were gonna, uh, you know, make uh, 
make young men grow tits and what the shit? You know? Because they mimic estrogen? Well, I guess the Merbellioids don't have those. Check out this Banksia. This, this one just finished flowering. Those are all the uh, old florets. The pollen presenters and styles and what the shit. Remember, they help as an incendiary device to make sure that the cone goes up in, uh, in flame. And then here's one. Here's an old cone after the florets have fallen off. Actually, just take a look at that. Doesn't that look kind of like something from your worst nightmares, you know? Just a bunch of little mouths, you know? <laughs> Talking to you, telling about your past failures, your failed relationships, your anxieties, childhood stresses, fears, how you don't add up. <laughs> I'm sorry, am I just projecting? Anyway, lovely form and function here. Again, these have already dispersed the seeds. And uh, there's the foliage. There's the little waxy foliage. Look at those... Uh, that white cuticle wax on the uh, abaxial surface right there. That's nice, huh? Hey, why don't you get a nice shot of that uh, eucalyptus lignotuber? It's the lignotuber. Yeah, that's what you call it, a lignotuber. You like it? Why don't you say that to yourself while you're naked in the shower, bathing. You just say lignotuber a bunch of times, huh? I don't know what the fuck's wrong with me. Oh, look at that. It's a nice view. More of that, uh, it's actually two billion year old uh, metasedimentary rock, not one billion. Yeah, so here's another species of the gastrolobium, formerly in the genus Nemsia, this particular species at least. Different from the one, uh, the other one I was showing you where the banner was flipped up. This one just stays closed like that the entire time. The leaves are also uh, more elliptical and less, uh, they're not as wide as the other species. So again, less, uh, less of that banner showing. In fact, none of the banners showing. And uh, the leaves are a lot different. Probably only speciated uh, relatively recently, I would assume, because they look so much alike. And then, of course, hey, you got to pull that keel down. Pull that keel down right there. Oh, yeah, there you go. See all those uh, free stamens. Again, free, not fused, as in uh, much of the rest of the pea family. Many of the merbellioids, uh, I think all of them have free stamens. You know, whereas the rest, uh, the rest of the pea family, those ten stamens are fused into a group of nine and a group of one. And again, the fuzzy calyx. You get the fuzzy calyx. Anyway, Gastrolobium rubrum. Hey, this one's a real stunner. Stays closed. Probably pollinated by birds, I'd assume. Yeah, here we go. Hakea brownii. It's either brownii or baxteri. They both uh, look quite alike. And the fan leaf hakea. Kind of hard to tell before those flowers open up. See, there's the flowers, exile flowers. Peoples aren't open yet. You can see there's the uh, last year's follicle. There's an old follicle. Yeah, we're just waiting for a fire. And again, quite a prickly and stiff and leathery. Except, ooh, but you know what? This new fold just kind of soft and nice. Oh, that's so nice. It's so nice for a hakea. Maybe he doesn't want me fondling him. Oh, there we go, Banksia salandri. Again, an old uh, inflorescence. Got those florets still on there. That's a nice one. There's one uh, waiting for a fire. Here's a much older inflorescence. See, so that's what it'll mature into once it's uh, once all those ovules are done being fertilized. You got a new growth on that too. So soft and fuzzy. You just cuddle it at night. You know, while you're cuddle it at night to warm you and keep you safe from your fears and anxieties. <laughs> Nice, uh, goddamn, look at that. Look at that abaxial surface. Look at all those goddamn veins. And that white cuticular wax. Is it a cuticular wax? Huh? You ever get a cuticular wax? You know? Get a cuticular wax instead of shaving next time, you know? So the genus Allocasarina is dioecious, meaning plants are either male or female. And this is a male. Look at all those, uh, look at, these are basically just, uh, uh, Alocasarina dongs you're looking at, you know? This is basically uh, pornography right here. This is smut. I'm a smut peddler. I'm a smut peddler, and you're a pervert. 
Do you see any? Do you see any fruits on this? I don't see any fruits. That's because it's a male. Because you see the dongs right there. If this was a female, you wouldn't have the dongs. These little. Uh, let's get up close and take a look at those. You wouldn't see these. Uh, look at all those fucking uh, anthers. Again, releasing pollen. Maybe not now, but uh. So you wouldn't see these if this was a female. Of course, you'd see those fruits, which look like little uh, mini pine cones. Cause, and this whole plant looks like a pine, even though it's uh, technically related to oaks. It's in the oak order Fagales. How about that? When a uke is pygmy, you can really get up and check out the flowers. It really affords you an opportunity here. You know, I, people hate on eucalyptus a lot, at least in California. And that's because uh, they're way out of context there and they can take over and they didn't evolve there. But seeing them in their native ecology, the ecosystems... Uh, and the other species that they've been sympatric with, that, the, that is that they share a geographical range with, and that they've done uh, done so with for millions of years, puts them in a different context. And you know what? I really fucking appreciate them now. There's 800 species of these bastards, at least. So uh, you can see the flower. Typical Myrtaceous guy, huh? Same family as tea tree oil and crepe myrtles. Dozens of stamens surrounding a central disc, again with that uh, style and stigma poking out. You know, and all the flowers aggregated together in one, uh, one cute little inflorescence right there. And then here's these, there's the, uh, the fruits, of course. Woody capsules. And of course, they close until the fire comes through and then they open. Oh, look at that nice termite mount. It's pretty big, huh? Holy shit. You've seen some of these that are like four feet tall. Actually, it might be ants. Anyway, uh, look at this guy. So Ericaceae is the family, the blueberry family, and it's the Epacridoidae subfamily. Remember, Epacridaceae are the Australian heaths, and they used to be their own family until they got nested within the much larger blueberry family, Ericaceae. And this is Andersonia echinocephala. You can see. So it just it almost looks like a conifer. It's super spiky foliage. Nice deterrent to being eaten or not on by a kangaroo. Get up there, look at those flowers. Just coming up in the uh, axles of the foliage right there. And just in case the pollinators needed any uh, further attractant, any more of a little beacon to get them there, you can see that the uh, the little leaflets, the bracts there, have, uh, they turned to white where the flowers are. You know, same kind of general thing that euphorbia does, though it's completely unrelated. And I probably shouldn't even be bringing it up because it's going to throw you off. But, uh, you know, a lot of plants will do that. They'll modify their leaves, the leaves that are closer to the flowers, the leaves and the bracts that directly subtend the flowers. They'll modify them uh, to make them more brightly colored and more of an attractant uh, to, those, uh, to those pollinators. Big old woody bastard. Nice woody stem. There's some more coming up over there. Yeah, so here's another species of uh, Darwinia. You know, it's not the best uh, spot to see it being in a shady bush. Let's see if I can show you some of the flower morphology there. Remember, this is in the Myrtle family, Myrtaceae. Okay, so right there at that focus, you can see all the uh, the stamens. And then it looks like they got multiple anthers on the end of them. You can't really tell. Then you go in there a little bit, and you can see all the multiple flowers. Each one of those, uh, each one of those flowers in the center right there. Hey, look at this banksia, just flowering right along the stem. Look at it. Oh, it's so fuzzy. The foliage is not, though. The foliage is quite abrasive, like most proteas. Oh, that new shit's fuzzy, though. Oh, it's so fuzzy. It's so fuzzy. Holy shit. It's a new, um, it's a, that's a uh, modification on a form I haven't seen yet in the uh, Proteaceae, the Proteoid Dungeon. Hey, so here's a nice opportunity to show you how this uh, parasite, this twining vine parasite related to avocados and bay trees is in the laurel family lauraceae it's in the genus cassitha here's an opportunity to show you how it goes about its business of stealing juice from other plants 
by juice I mean uh, carbohydrates, sugars, nutrients, etc. You can see uh, right there in the center of the frame is uh, the uh, emerging hostoria. Hostoria are just what they actually go into uh, the epidermal tissue of the host plant. And then there you could see uh, where it's actually, <laughs> the plant is actually, it's even created, it's caused the stem on this hachia, which is the host that it's parasitizing, protea, it's causing the stem uh, to uh, to swell. Yeah, pretty interesting. How about that, huh? This plant is everywhere here. And again, it looks like dotter, uh, which uh, I don't believe they even uh, get down here. I don't believe dotter is native. Dotter, of course, is a cuscuta in the genus. And it's a big parasite. You'll see it in California. You know, you'll see it on plants on the, uh, uh, on the coast of California. It looks like silly string. It looks like orange silly string. And it has no relation to this. It's just convergent evolution. They both, uh, you know, these are just uh, parasitic vines. Look at that. So two billion year old uh, oceanic sediments. They've been metamorphosed a little bit. That is, they've been cooked. And right there, that pink flowering bush, it's a member of the citrus family Rutaceae. Is that uh, Baronia again? And I believe this is Baronia pulchella. And there was actually just a moth that was a, a new species of moth. New species, a new genus of moth discovered here that uh, pollinates this thing. There's so much shit to be discovered here still. It's kind of incredible. It's such an understudied area. You know, just looking at the plants here, I mean, holy shit. There's so much, uh, <laughs> so much left to be uh, discovered and identified and named. Hopefully not after a person, because it's, uh, it's kind of whack, you know? It's fucking corny and it's whack. Anyway, here we go. No, excuse me, here's Baronia pulchella. Look at that pinnate leaf structure. Ah, this smells nice, those, those pellucid oil glands, all the resins, like most of the uh, citrus family uh, tends to have. Just touching a fold, it just smells real nice. Oh, look at that. Phyllites. Like a lower grade schist. That's why they got that nice silvery complexion to them. Oh, rub it. It's so smooth. Can you rub it? Oh, never mind. You're not <laughs> Fuck me. I am having too much fun. Fuck with you guys. All right, there we go. Looks kind of steep, huh? Two billion years old. What do you think was going on in the oceans two billion years ago? Whole lot of nothing. All that iron had just oxidized. You know, giving us the... Uh, the uh, banded iron formations and whatnot. Just a lot of cyanobacteria. Not even any vertebrate life yet. Holy shit. It's pretty old. You gotta you gotta travel far to get rocks like this. I think you got some uh, you got some maybe in the Mojave Desert, not quite this old. You got some up in Canada that are quite old and then Australia just has a ton of them. You know that mellow Luca on there. Hey, you got a species of Velia, Gudini ACA, just growing right out the cliff. And look at this bastard over here. It's a big, uh, it's a big cockroach. Of course, I'm not an entomologist, so I should probably shut my mouth. I don't know what he is, but uh, he's quite large. Just kind of hang. Oh, look at this little filamentous uh, antenna. Uh, maybe I woke him up, being louder. Yeah, there he goes. Oh, look at your legs. Aren't you cute? Oh, shit. 
Now, are you are you trying to do some background mimicking with this uh, this oxidation in this rock? What's going on? I don't know. Maybe that's just the lichen. Okay, you trying to get away from me? Yeah, I don't blame you. Okay. All right. I right, see you later. There's that species of Kunzia. Another one of the myrtles. <laughs> There's so many of them. Look at the, uh, the flowers before they open up look like a little pineapple. Though. Somewhat imbricate little leaflets. You can see where the river is. See how much bigger the trees get down there? Yeah, well, that's all I got. All right, this one's just too weird to pass up. I got to show you. It looks like one of the goddamn sulfur buckwheats we get in Western North America. This is Glyscrocarion aureum, and it's in the family. <laughs> just saying the name of the family cracks me up. Haloragaceae. Oh, Halorugus? Fucking okay. God. That's one of the Borea. <laughs> Borea and Haloragaceae and... Borea and Haloragus. <laughs> Borea and Haloragus got together at a, at a at a bar, had a couple of drinks, you know, and just they had a long conversation about how much they resented their own names. Oh, God, I don't know what's wrong with me. Anyway, look at these flowers. Quite notable. Look at those uh, rather erect uh, stamens right there. It's a very weird structure. And then what, what are these? Are these the female flowers with no? Those ones without the uh, yellow anthers on them? Oh no, those are just old. It looks like they're just old. Where's the stigma on there? This is a completely new one for me. I'm learning with you right now. We're learning together. Does that make you feel warm inside? Holy shit, what a weird plant. God, it's incredible though. Ah, oh, the evolution of life on Earth. I'm in love with it. All the, all the different forms they take. Look at these little uh, colline leaves. And then you got these uh, little, uh, look like a pipe cleaner leaf, you know? Much more dense. And I guess the, most of the species in this family are, <laughs> and, except for Haloragus, <laughs> most of the species are somewhat herbaceous, herbaceous perennials, I meaning they just keep their little root uh, year round. Anyway, there you go. No fucking around for me. There you go. Gliscrochiron aureum. Oh, now there's a stunner, another Proteaceae, the smoke bush, Conospermum. Look at this guy. Look at the colors on it. Fuzzy teeples. This is pretty wild. This is this is one of the most beautiful plants I've seen all day today. Got needle-like foliage. Just looks like some sort of little uh, dainty uh, spruce bush or something, you know, without flowers. And then once it once it gets the flowers, boom. Oh, look, it's an entire woodland composed of Hachia cuculata. Looking like candelabras. No leaves on the first uh, 10 feet of uh, a stem, and then you just get a little cluster of them up top. Another uh, entirely fire-dependent protea. Hachia trifurcata as well. This Allocasarina. Look at this. Fruit from a couple years ago. Yeah, it looks like uh, four or five years ago. Just waiting for a fire. You know, but even without the flowers, the flowers are red when they bloom, but even without the flowers, this is a gorgeous plant. Hey, just real weird looking, too. It looks like a goddamn uh, alien. Looks like uh, it's some sort of weird... Yeah, I don't know. 
Never stop being uh, blown away by how weird the floor looks down here. And just when you thought that the Proteaceae could not blow your mind anymore, here's another genus in that family. This is Lambertia. And uh, the flowers are real striking. Not only the flowers, but the whole form of the goddamn plant. Look at it. It's essentially, uh, well, I guess it's just a shrub here. Almost, uh, almost a small tree. But it's just, I mean, again, it's doing the same thing that Hakia was, you know. No leaves on the first... Uh, three quarters of the uh, plant and then you just uh, right at the end there you just get these little uh, kind of non-distinct almost myrtle like uh, leaves and then there's the uh, there's the fruits and uh, there's the flowers just wild with those uh, yellow pollen presenters uh, just showing off doing a thing God damn. Where the hell is the, where, where is the rest of the plant? Where's the rest of the plant over there? Oh, yeah, there it is. Jesus, oh, look at the little stylidiums on the ground over there. There you go, there's a much larger Lambertia. It's about, uh, I don't know, 19, 20 feet tall. I don't see any fruit on it, so it must, uh, it must just de hiss when it's done. Oh, yeah, look at the synaphia, too. Another proteoid. Holly leaved proteaceae. Synaphia is a weird one. There's that, uh, there's that undescribed one. There's a species I was seeing that hasn't even been named yet. So much, uh, undiscovered botany down here, you know? Just understudied. The one I was seeing, I uh, just had these, oh, look, it's dimorphic. The one I was seeing before just had these uh, spatulate leaves. Again, Proteaceae, it's a synaphia. Very prickly, hard foliage. Now, and I can't leave this guy out either, Sterlingia. Another Proteaceae. God, there's so many. There's so many. And they're hard. I guess they're kind of hard to grow. You can't fertilize them at all. They need shit soil because that's what they're adapted to. What a fucking great plant family, huh? Shit, I'm, I'm not making it very far. I think I'm making it like, you know, botanist paste. Two miles an hour, if that. But you got to check out this, uh, this other Proteaceae. Look at this. I think it's a Petrophily. Okay, so you get the new foliage. Super soft, you know? You could, you could, uh, you know, soft enough to uh, wipe your ass with, though. I would never dare do such a thing with such a beautiful plant. And then the older foliage, of course, is hard and spiny. You know, you lay on that, that'll, uh, that'll send you yelping. You got the, uh, these are the old florets here. So this thing's already done flowering. And then you get these little, uh, pine cone looking fruits see these are the teeples and the old florets uh, coming off right there i just look at the color on that new foliage though remember it's got all those uh, pigments in it those red pigments acting like plant melanin to protect this uh, soft supple new foliage from the uh, harsh ultraviolet light and then of course once they harden off they turn green and get relatively uh, spiny and uh, unpleasant to touch no more of those old florets God damn, I just, the proteas, man, you know? Only place I ever seen them before was in botanic gardens because we don't get any up north. By up north, I mean up north and on the other side of the world. But uh, they're just, they're fucking incredible. Just growing right out of this barren, crappy soil, you know? Proteaceae myrtaceae. And then who doesn't love this uke? Look at this uke. I believe it's a uh, Pleurocarpa with the winged. Look at the, the waxy winged stems. Holy shit. Oh, it smells so nice. 
You know, again, but again, it reminds me of the potpourri that my stepma used to use when I was in trouble all the time. She was real mean to me back then, you know, so it's kind of, I, she said, trigger for me. It's triggering. I got PTSD. I got the PTSD. Got to go see the shrink. You know, so I had the PTSD, but then I'd treat it by doing things like, uh, you know, going to bed late at night with a uh, a uh, spoken word CD of Jello B after his voice on repeat. And I think that's how I ended up uh, so fucked up. And I'm here talking to you about this stuff uh, now. Actually, I'm just out here talking to myself in the middle of it. Anyway, look at this one. Look at this Banksia in the Proteas to Blow Your Mind. I believe this is Banksia Gardener Eye. It's one of those prostrate ones again. What is this one over here? Now, this is a different one. Looks like a fern almost. Jesus, look at the different colors of the foliage. Isn't that nice? Isn't that going to calm you down? Here's that Banksy again. Oh, look at it. Look, he's got the little the little uh, inflorescences forming down there. It almost looks like a cycad. Are you getting amped on Proteas yet? Huh? You think they're worth taking a look at? They're wild, man. They're, they're uh, you know, some otherworldly shit. What's this, another hakia? So soft and supple. And very friendly and calming. Calming, nervous, energy, recovery, support. Oh, anyway, look at it. Get closer up there. Look at the geometry on it, you know? This is just beautiful form. Endless uh, forms are most beautiful and uh, what the shit. And who knows what the shit, which one this is. Another Banksia. Another beautiful Banksia. God, I can't get enough, you know? Then you got Banksia elicifolia or Cessilis up here. Remember, they can look a lot alike, both those two. Proteaceous roots, pollen presenters. <laughs> Just looks like little pine cones sticking out of the ground. Nice Xanthoria's coming up. Oh, there's a big Xanthoria. And uh, one of the 9,000 kinds of acacia, Fabaceae. Different kinds of, how many different species of Proteaceae can you see? There's a Hakea. Uh, it looks like there's another Hakea. Uh, there's a Synaphia. God damn, I just... <laughs> I want someone to write a book on a Proteaceae and then mack me in the head with it about 40 times. And so I guess they released some numbats in the area, which are, I think, the most uh, closely related relative of uh, the extinct Tasmanian tiger. Either way, they're a very uh, endangered and rare uh, marsupial, again, threatened by feral cats and foxes. Anyway, take a look at this really weird stylidium. This tiny little guy, you know, I've seen so many stylidiums, I've kind of uh, become aesthetically immune to them. But uh, this is a very odd uh, variation on one. You can see the uh, Corolla pattern, both the Corolla pattern and uh, the, the fact that the those uh, petals, you got two uh, two petals that are shorter than the uh, the other ones. And of, uh, whatever, the, the interesting thing here, there's another one right over there. The interesting thing here is that this appears to be rooting itself back into the ground. If you could see right there. So this plant, what it did is it germinated there, it looks like, and then uh, it's re-rooting itself. Again, there's got to be over two or three hundred different species of uh, stylidium uh, just in Western Australia alone. And uh, surely many undescribed ones. This is really, you can see, look at those red roots. He's just rooting himself back into the sand. And I can't tell. I was going to say he looks like an annual, uh, but uh, he doesn't actually look like an annual. It looks like he's got a woody taproot like he's perennial. These are so goddamn weird. It's the very strange and a uh, very genus. <laughs> God. 
Anyway, there you go. Got a, got a little bit of a crooked trigger. So five pedals, one's been modified into a trigger. Uh, this one, extremely odd in that it's got the two of those pedals are much uh, smaller than the others. Who knows why uh, why that is. And then, of course, he's just, uh, just rerouting himself. Anyway, how about that? Oh, back in the Proteaceae dungeon, look, it's another species of Lambertia. Yeah. <laughs> Oh, it's kind of glandular. It's kind of kind of sticky. Look at the woodland here. Not thick forest, just this kind of low-growing mallee. Yet they're sticky. Well, it's a Proteaceae. It may not be a Lambertia. It certainly looks like a Lambertia. You hearing these birds? What's oh, more that Calyctrix? Myrtaceae, one of the most beautiful Myrtaceae, one of the most beautiful Myrtle family members, in my opinion. Got another baronia over there. That's Synaphia again. Proteaceae. And then here we go, in a realm of angiosperms, that is flowering plants that look kind of like cycads, actually look a lot like cycads, we have Banksia. Formerly this was known as Dryandra lindliana. When they changed the genus, the Banksia, when they drew Dryandra in a Banksia, they changed it to a species epithet that begins with a D, and I can't remember what it was. Dryandra, something like that, I don't know. You're going to have to look that one up on your own. I'll put it in the notes when I uh, edit this fucking video which I'm not looking forward to because it's a pain in the ass. Regardless, look at that uh, foliage. Very serrated, leathery, hard. Feels kind of like uh, some sort of torture device strip, you know? Yeah, but some people are into that. And of course, there's those flower heads right in there. This is this is a stunner. This is a fucking stunner. Don't you love Proteaceae? If you don't, I'm going to go ahead and say you're a prick. I think that's just the way it is. Just incredible adaptation to these uh, nutrient-poor soils and then just incredible form, too. They're just, they're really fucking gorgeous. You know, you got these guys on the ground, then you got this Lambertia up here, you know, kicking me in the dick all over the place. Just a, just a real, just incredible. And then, of course, so this is what they look like before they... See, so you got all these other bracts, too, that open up to aid in attracting. So those... Those teeples and these uh, individual florets haven't opened up, but the bracts have. Another uh, attractant for the pollinators. Probably birds, I'd assume. Maybe some of those, actually, you know what? The, I don't think the cockatoos that I've heard flying around and making all kinds of noise and what the shit. I don't think they're pollinators, but uh, I think they just kind of eat them. Little mischievous bastards. Look at all those bracts. Almost has like an involucre. And there was a fruit over here somewhere I seen. Anyway. Anyway, there you go. Another species of Lambertia. Cut it just before sundown. Yeah, I'm going to have a cup of coffee and pass out in the van. Go fuck yourself. Have a lovely evening.